What we're actually going to be working on today is this 2002 Honda Civic, 7th Gen Civic, um, where the air conditioning, the refrigerant system is working fine, electrically everything's working fine, but for some weird reason when the weather gets really hot that the AC compressor clutch doesn't quite engage consistently. Car cools off and then suddenly the air conditioning works and then as it gets hotter, which at least where I'm at right now in Canada, it's been blazing hot that not having your air conditioner work properly is extremely painful and frustrating. So uh, rather than replacing an entire compressor to resolve this issue, I'm going to show you guys a neat little trick that will likely fix your problems and you can get a few more miles or years out of your compressor before it really needs replacement. So let's dive right in. So here is our AC compressor right here. Okay, so here's our crankshaft, here's our compressor. Um, this car is all original. No one has ever worked on the air conditioning system prior. So we know the refrigerant charge, electrical, and all the parts um, have never been modified in any way. Now, the problem with this car is that under normal sort of mild climate days, the air conditioner actually blows really cold, doesn't make any funny noises, and it cools perfectly. The issue comes in where the temperature starts to soar above 28 degrees centigrade or so, so I guess what, 85 Fahrenheit and higher, that the compressor clutch suddenly starts not engaging. Now, I've already done some electrical troubleshooting. I've also made sure that the refrigerant charge is good and everything checks out. Um, and it's a very peculiar situation where when the engine's running and the air conditioning's turned on, this clutch won't come on. I've even checked the relay, which is a common problem, and that's it's new actually, and it still didn't solve the issue. However, what I did was I hoisted up the car and the car was running with the air conditioning turned on and very carefully, and I do not recommend anyone trying this, is that I took a bamboo stick like this and I just kind of bumped this clutch while the engine was running and then suddenly the clutch engaged and then of course it'll cycle and then disengage and then it won't re-engage again. And then I would bump it again and it would engage, which implies that the electromagnet is not pulling this front clutch plate towards the drive pulley, uh, which is here. Now. The Honda factory spec on this compressor calls for 0.5 millimeter gap between the clutch plate and uh, I guess the, the pulley behind it, plus or minus 0.15 millimeter. So you can be as tight as 0.35 to as wide as 0.65, um, with ideally 0.5 being in the middle of the range. Now this car has a lot of miles on it, it's all original, so I wouldn't be shocked if this clutch plate has got some wear on it. So here's a 0.5 millimeter feeler gauge, I'm sticking it in here between the pulley and the clutch super crazy loose so that's not good let's take the upper limit of that gap which is 0.65 and stick that in and see super loose again so let's take our next size up a 0 0.70 stick that in and see again very loose there's no drag at all so that means this gap on this clutch between it and the pulley is greater than the allowable service limit that honda permits so the option here is to either replace this clutch plate or this entire clutch assembly or fortunately we can actually undo some shims that are behind this clutch plate to help close that gap up to compensate for some of the wear. Now prior to this video I actually sprayed a tiny bit of penetrating lube onto this nut. Um, it's a 14 millimeter metric nut and it actually just holds this clutch plate to the drive pulley. You'll notice here that I haven't talked about taking the belts off or anything like that you don't need to on this because this drive pulley is held on with a lock ring and the only thing that this nut is holding is this drive plate um, on the top of the clutch. Now um, to take this off easily we're going to use a tool like this. You can buy it from Amazon for about $30 Canadian. Basically it's just got some adjustable pins that sit into the holes right here to hold this from spinning and that you can then pass a ratchet through to undo that. So So on my clutch tool, it's got a pinned side and then it's got a peg side. Um, I guess the peg side's just bigger for bigger clutches and then if it doesn't fit in the little Honda clutch here, then you can just use the little pins. Okay, with my pins lined up, ratchet. Just undo that nut. And I can just take that off. And this nut, is a bit of a special one. It's a nut with sort of a nylon insert to prevent it from backing out off the compressor shaft. Let's wipe this clean. And then you should be able to carefully get this off 
And if it doesn't want to pop off right away, you can always use a thin flat bladed screwdriver and very carefully just sort of pry at this clutch plate to get it off the splines on the compressor. We have years and years of corrosion on here, so it might take a bit of coaxing to get it off. Oh, just like this, see, it just comes out like this. Okay, so you can see the backside of this clutch plate, it's worn, like I can feel it in fact, and there's a bit of a clutch lining material um, that is quite worn out. Now on the back side of the clutch, right in front of the bearing, on many of these compressors, you'll see that there's a little metal shim here. These shims from Honda come in various thicknesses, I believe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and so on millimeters. And so that basically allows you to adjust that clutch gap. And since on this car, there's only the one, we're gonna remove it. So we've removed the shim. We're gonna take a bit of brake cleaner now, and we're gonna spray this onto our rag. And we're gonna just wipe down the surfaces of the magnetic clutch, including getting rid of any dirt and junk behind the bearing here. You don't wanna spray the brake cleaner directly here uh, because then it'll remove any lubricants inside of this bearing. So just on a rag, clean it all off so that there's no oil or anything that can cause it to slip. We're gonna do the same with our clutch plate here. I'm just gonna spray some on a rag. wipe it clean. Reinstallation is very simple. Align the splines of the clutch plate onto the compressor, press down firmly, and then we're going to take our nut, make sure the surfaces are clean again with that brake cleaner rag, and screw that back on. Then using our tool, we're going to hold on to our clutch. So you tighten this nut, just snug it, it's more than enough. And that should be good. Just make sure that it still spins and that we can take our feeler gauge now. And since that shim was quite thin, I would assume that we've only closed the gap just a hair. So let's take our upper limit shim, 0.65 millimeter, and insert it to see how it feels. Wow, it actually did close this gap quite a bit. Um, impressive. So we'll take our 0.5 because it's actually too tight and see. And look, 0.5, right? It actually, it's a hair tight. So let's see if our 0.4 slips up because 0.4 would still be acceptable within that allowable limit. So there's 0.4. No problem. In fact, there's almost no drag. So it's between 0.4 and 0.5, which is well within that allowable service limit for this compressor clutch spec. Yeah. Okay, guys. So now that we've removed that one shim behind this clutch plate and tighten this nut back down, we're going to go and start up the car and see if this compressor clutch engages now. The air conditioning going to run and it's going to cycle back and forth. And you can see here that when the system calls for the clutch to come on, it engages with no funny noises and then it should disengage like so without continuing to spin, which means it's not dragging. So as you guys can see from my repair video that repairing, or I guess you'd say removing a shim off your Honda AC compressor clutch is extremely easy and can be done with some basic hand tools and some feeler gauges. If you guys like this video, Give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching.